Hello and welcome to my channel. One thing has started to annoy me tremendously and that is my needle storage. I have so many needles from different manufacturers, different sizes, different types. I have safety pins, I have cord pins, I have you know blunt needles for embroidery, but I can never find the needle I'm looking for. Everything is at the bottom of the drawer and I have to turn the whole drawer upside down to find the tool I'm looking for. So it's time for me to make a proper needle book for my needles. Needle books were really popular in the Victorian era, but they are used still. And there are so many nice inspiration images on Pinterest of nice needle books with embroidery and lace and whatnot. And it just happens that I have so many pieces of linen and cotton from my old sewing projects that I can use to make a really nice needle book and I don't have to buy any fabric for it. I just have to find pieces that go well together and I need to make a needle book with several pages so that I can sort my needles according to the size and type. Let's start by making a pattern for the needle book. The actual dimensions aren't important, but I made mine 11.5 cm high and 9 cm wide that equals 4.5 inches and 3.5 inches. Then I'll add the spine. As the pages will be quite thick, a spine is important. Mine is 2.5 cm or 1 inch wide. I use my pattern to cut the pattern pieces out of thick fusible interfacing. I chose this pink linen for the cover and now place the interfacing pieces on it, the glue side down. I leave small gaps between the covers and the spine to make the covers easier to fold. I have also cut the interfacing pieces for the pages. I want the pages to be soft, so I use craft felt. I also cut the spine out of the felt but I ended up not using the piece. Now, choosing the embellishments is more difficult than it seems. I first dug into my lace box in the hopes of finding good remnant pieces. This might work. I'll let the lace wait and cut the cover fabric in shape. Then I'll lay down the interfacing pieces and fuse them in place. Here are the interface covers. I use stamps to press text on white linen fabric. Ironing the ink afterwards sets the ink in place. I was lucky to have this pins and needles stamp and I made another using letter stamps that spells neulat that is Finnish for needles. There was a lot of trial and error in deciding what looked best. I finally decided to use this white lace for the spine and add the pins and needles labor on the lace. I sewed both the lace and the label on by the machine. I decided that some contrast was needed among all that pink and white. This green linen will work nicely. A pink edge looks decorative and doesn't unravel easily. Sewing by hand can double as embroidery, so I switch into sewing by hand. I use three strands of pink embroidery floss to attach the label on the green background with a running stitch. Finding that flowery ribbon in my stash was a stroke of luck. It's used nicely with the other colors I am using. I combine the ribbon with a strip of pink cotton lace. 
now that the label is also sewn on, there is still this big area underneath that needs some decoration. I decided to embroider some flowers. I'm using little chain stitches to create flowers. After the flowers, I want to make green stems using appropriately called stem stitch. One leaf will look nice. First, I stitch the outline and then fill it with stitches. I left these ends of the embroidery floss hanging free. I think it looks nice like this, but I still need to add a small bow. I tried to show you how to make a ribbon bow using a fork, but I messed up so many times that it's better for you to look up a good tutorial online for that. Now I'm adding the lining to the cover using a blanket stitch. This also makes a decorative edge to the whole book, especially when I use this red thread. Now I need to add some pages. I was about to sew the page together with the interfacing when I realized that if I want to add any felt pieces for my needles, it was much easier to do it now. So let's cut some felt.
I'll attach the pieces of felt using a running stitch as it looks prettier than a massive stitching. Now I have sewn the page together, but I did leave a gap in order to turn the page the right way around. Notice how I sew just slightly over the edge of my interfacing. This holds the interfacing in place well enough without causing any bulk. I will close the gap by hand later. The other pages come together with a spine. I chose to use white and pink linen for this. I'll mark the outlines of the pages and the spine using magic marker. I think this ribbon looks nice here, so let's add it as well. I will attach the double page first by sewing along the gaps between the spine and the covers. I had some mask pieces left over from last year, so I used this piece of cotton to make a pocket for those big and blunt needles and board games. Sorry about the poor focus. I made a pocket and divided it into sections big enough to slot the needles. Now I sew the pocket in place by hand. To close the needle book, I added a button and a little cord. Now my needle book is ready and I have been already using it a lot. It's so handy that all my needles are found in one place, especially the bigger ones that always fell to the bottom of the drawer. This video was part of Costume Symposium 2021. Please go and watch other wonderful videos planned. There will be so much that you can learn from them. Thank you for watching 
and see you soon on this channel. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you later. Bye!